Good morning. Good Sunday morning. <laughs> I pray that your day is absolutely wonderful. I want to take the time to welcome you into the live stream virtual sanctuary of Wren Family Worship Center. Amen. I uh, also want to uh, welcome you uh, to our live broadcast. Uh, we truly believe that the presence of the Lord is here. And because he's here and because you've shown up as well, we already know we got the victory. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise I God. I am Dr. Joycelyn Purnell Henderson. Uh, some of you affectionately call me Mother Henderson. And this is one. Dr. Walter Henderson the third. That would be me. Yes, it is. Yeah, it Hallelujah. Is. Praise God. Senior pastor of Orion Family Worship Center. I want to take the time to go through some of these birthday shout outs and to give just a few uh, announcements and then we're going to go right into the word. So I challenge you to go on right now and get your seats, get uh, comfortable, get your Bibles, get your pencil, paper, iPad, whatever it takes to write uh, and prepare yourself for the uncompromised and grafted word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to start out with um, our prayer, early morning prayer, from 5 to 6 a.m. Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, and Friday morning. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in that, I'll be giving you now the dial-in number. And if um, you are desiring to be a part of that, I'm going to ask if you would if make sure that you are getting on the, on the call uh, at 5 a.m. so that we can get the call started. We're going to start at 5 anyway. But the dial-in number is 701-801-1211. Again, the dial-in number is 701-801-1211. And then the access number in order to get access to the uh, live um, morning call is 486-979-364. And again, 486-979-364. Mother Henderson, I didn't get all that. Well, you can send me over an email. If you send it to info, I-N-F-O, at Berean Family Worship Center, we'll get back to you and give you that information again. I want to also tell you what we are going to be praying in our prayer focus, because anytime... I believe we come before the Lord, we ought to have a focus on what it is that we are desiring to receive from him and what his word has said that he would do for us. Amen. So on Tuesday, we're going to be praying for the family. That's strictly your family, my family, our families. And so you ought to come with scriptures that will support what you're praying for concerning our families. And that is Tuesday morning. And then Thursday, uh, we will be praying for all first responders, that is those that are in the medical care field, or medical field, I should say, in health care, as well as those that are in law enforcement and our military personnel. So again, Thursday, we'll be praying for our law enforcement, our medical and health care, and our military personnel. And we, we will not be praying on Wednesday on the call because Wednesday evening, we again will be right back here for our live stream Amen. for our group study. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, we will be praying for civil government. So those that are in authority in our civil government and then also the government of the church, the five-fold church uh, authority. And so again, I know I'm going through that this fast. And you may have not uh, received all of it and got the opportunity to write it down. But uh, you can send, again, an email over to info at Berean Family Worship Center. And we'll get back to you in reference to those different prayer focuses. Again, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. All right, listen up. Got all these birthday shout outs. It's a whole lot of them this morning, y'all. Wow. And so <laughs> I want to start out with one I for, uh, actually missed on last week, and that's Brother Elijah Jones. Happy 50th <laughs> yesterday. Amen. Bless the Lord. And uh, today is Brother Howard Borden's birthday. Come on, Alabama. Brother Howard. Yeah, right from Alabama. Come on, say it with me. I'm done. <laughs> 
go roll tide. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Romario White, uh, again, today is his birthday. He's turning a whole seven. Mm -hmm. Jaden Page, his birthday is tomorrow, turning a whole ten. Wow. Dad Fred Young's birthday is tomorrow. We won't say how old he's turning and how young he is. Amen. All right. All right. <laughs> Dorothy McLaurin birthday, April 7th. Stephanie Williams birthday, April 7th. All right. LeBron Boy's birthday, April 9th. Wow. Elliot, Minister Elliot Washington's what? birthday, April 10th. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And then we'll end with April 11th, which would be uh, through next week, Saturday. And then mm -hmm. Sunday, we'll start again. Minister Mervyn Burr's birthday, April 11th. Wow. And Sister Cynthia Hunter's birthday, April 11th. My Come goodness. on, Pastor. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All y'all. Amen. Bless to God. every one of y'all. Hallelujah. I pray that you celebrate large and that you also celebrate uh, safe in everything that you're doing. Amen. Amen. I want to go right now into the word that um, I believe the Lord has given me to pray uh, this morning. Mm -hmm. And it, I know you got your Bibles because I've already asked that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going into uh, the scripture in Second Chronicles mm -hmm. 32. Mm -hmm. Last week when I came to pray, we prayed what I believe that the Lord gave me, what I believe is the benefit package uh, some of the benefit package that he's given us in the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so today I want to talk about second, uh, excuse me, second Chronicles mm -hmm. 32. I'm going to be reading uh, verse 7, 8, 20, and 21. Let me give you the other uh, scripture that I'm going to be reading and praying back to the Lord as well, which is out of 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Matter of fact, I'm going to read that first, I believe. Mm -hmm. First John 5, 14 through 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, not Praise in ourselves. That if we ask anything, anything according to his will, mm -hmm. that, that's the prerequisite that right is. there. That is. is that it must be in his word Come in on. order for us to be able to get the end results that mm -hmm. we're desiring. Praise God. And the word of God says, he heareth us. Hallelujah. And if we know that he hear us, mm -hmm. whatsoever we ask, we know, we know that we have the petitions that we desire from him. So Praise you can't go God. just asking anything. Come on. You got to ask according to his word and his will. And his will is his word. Yeah, it is. And his word is his will. Because they are one. And you cannot separate and I can't separate them from one another. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to Second Chronicles mm -hmm. 32. And reading verse 7 and 8. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to skip down to verse twenty. And 21. And then verse 7 says, Be strong and courageous. Yes. Be not afraid nor dismayed. Mm -hmm. For the king of Assyria, for uh, COVID uh, 19 or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. nor for all the multitudes that is with him, all the other things that's trickling behind him. Mm -hmm. For there be more with us than with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right there, right there. Yes, Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> with him is an army of flesh. We, mm -hmm. uh, with this virus, it's an army of flesh. Glory mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. But with us is the Lord our God. Hallelujah. To help us and to fight our battles. Glory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah. King of Judah. I believe this word is going to come to you in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. When Pastor began to preach mm -hmm. and teach, it's going to cause your heart and my heart to rest yes. and to become encouraged. Praise Glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Verse 20 says in 2 Chronicles 32, mm -hmm. And for this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed. And cried to heaven. Oh, they, they didn't get to talking to everybody else. Mm -hmm. They cried unto the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Listen to verse 21. Saying the Lord sent an angel, glory to God, mm -hmm. which cut off all the mighty men of valor, mm -hmm. all of this corona. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the leaders and captains 
in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame face. He was shame faced mm -hmm. to his own land. And when he was coming to the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bowels mm -hmm. slew him with the sword. Now, you know, that's enough right there just to go on and get us excited about the Lord today. Because God would make the enemy turn his back. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I say even now, come on, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you, thank you God. that you are our God. Yeah. It might look like that there's a lot of things that's surrounding us. Mm -hmm. But God, we know that you are surrounding us with your love. Hallelujah. You're surrounding us with your care. Yeah. We even now declare that the Hezekiahs will rise up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise that God. the Isaiahs will rise up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise that the God. Aaron's, the Aaronettes, mm -hmm. the Hers, the her nets. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, the Lord. kings, the priests of this earth mm -hmm. will rise up. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Rise up. And we will even now bombard heaven with our prayers. Hallelujah. Asking you, oh Lord God, will you not judge this situation? Yes. And God, we believe the answer is yes and amen. Hallelujah. We thank you today that you are our God. Yes. And beside thee, there is no other God. Thank you for Every other Hallelujah. God is dead, mm -hmm. dumb, Confused and mm -hmm. still asleep. Hallelujah. They lose every battle. Mm -hmm. So we come now, not with swords, mm -hmm. but we come with your word. Hallelujah. We come with great exaltation. Yes. We come with thanksgiving. Thank you. And Lord. we say, Who is like the Lord? Hallelujah. And we do believe nobody. Hallelujah. 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 So we encourage ourselves today. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Get your hands up. Praise God. God is still on our side. Hallelujah. And we shall not be moved. Thank so you. So we bless you, Lord God. Mm -hmm. And we we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you exaltation. Thank you, God. And we magnify you large in this place. Thank you, Lord. And we do it in no other name but Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah to praise. the risen king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank His you, right arm got us victory. Yes. Hallelujah. And we give you praise, we do, Lord God. God. Hallelujah. It's on you. Oh, thank you. Very good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, good morning to all of you. Christ glory God. to God. So good to be with you one more time. Yeah, glory. Yes, and we I... praise the Lord and give him all my, glory and my, honor. Praise my. God. So if you oui. would, I want you to go into your Bibles. We'll start yes. at the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus. Thank you, Lord. 17th chapter, beginning there at the 10th verse. Phew, Jesus. Leviticus, the Old Testament. 17th chapter, I want to begin there at the 10th verse, praise God. And we'll begin reading there, hallelujah. And it said, and whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you that eat it any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eat it blood and will cut him off from him off. among his people. <laughs> For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you up on the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement mm -hmm. for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that so journey among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel or of the stranger that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. For it is the Your life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I have said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood mm -hmm. thereof. Whosoever shall eat it shall be cut off. Cut off. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I want to speak to you today about the life is the blood. Oui. The life is the blood. We are Come continuing on. where we started last time with this series, Who Has Believed Our Report? Who Has Believed Our Report? And so, Father, I thank you now for what you're about to do. Yes, thank you, Lord. I submit to the Lordship of Jesus the Christ. Thank you for thinking your thoughts through my mind. Ah, Lord, Lord, anoint our understanding now yes, that, Father, you. we will hear beyond what I say. Yes. I'm opening my mouth. Fill it now for your glory, for your thank honor. You, we'll Jesus. give you praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Now we're taking up actually where we stopped on last time. We were looking at the book of Genesis, the third chapter, and we were seeing where Adam and Eve had fallen. And praise God, we find that God's initial intention was to have earth as an extension of his kingdom, which included heaven as his headquarters. Praise God. So God created earth, a physical reality, uh, counterpart, if you will, to the spiritual reality of heaven. And that he was now extending his family. And so he wanted now to take man, create man, so that now heaven, uh, earth will become a, an extension, if you will, of heaven. And so if it will, it would be heaven on earth. Praise my, God. My. And so as he did, we find out in the third chapter that man failed. Amen. That uh, Eve, the enemy came to her, used her, praise God. And the Bible says she gave it to her husband who did eat also, and their eyes were open. We talked about that last time, so I won't go a lot of it, but I want to take up from there and continue to go. So we find that they tried to cover themselves, amen, with fig leaves, and we found out that we cannot cover our unrighteousness, amen. We cannot cover ourselves. And many times, that's what religion is. It is a form or way that we can cover ourselves. Some work, something that we do would make us righteous, would make us more acceptable to God. And so we do certain things, whether we pray long, fast long, do a lot of different things to try to get accepted by God. And we find that we can't do anything, praise That's God, right. but that God himself has to cover yes, us. Yes, come on. And we found that with the animal. And so we said that an animal was sacrificed at that point, praise God, and was pointing forth now to that which was to come, praise God. And so God initially had told them that, praise God, that they're eating, there, there was the trees in the garden, all manner of fruits. Praise God. Pick one. He said, Judy Variety, I'm just asking you not to touch <laughs> one of those trees. Amen. Oui, you got, oui. And many times when we see scripture, we try to see what we can't do. We only look at what all we can yes, do. Yes, come on. Praise God. <laughs> and so now uh, that's what God wants our focus on. Satan will always point us to what we can't do. Oui. Praise God. But God put those things in place to protect us. Amen. And so even as a parent would do for their children, they would, y'all won't let me do anything. Praise God. We're trying to protect you and your life. Amen. And so we find that the Bible said that, that now there is something that death now had become a law, but it was not activated. It was there. And God warned them in the day that you eat of that tree, that same day you will surely die. Now you need to understand there was no death in the world, but God warned them and let them know that you can activate death. Let me tell you how you can activate them, is that you eat of that tree. Amen? And so we find that in Genesis 2, 17. Adam, and so we find out they did eat, and so the Lord came and said, Adam, where are you? Now, we know that God is omniscient, so he knew exactly where Adam was. Amen? He's <laughs> omnipresent, praise God, everywhere all the time. So the issue was not that, but here's what happened. Adam, your position has changed. Something has happened that you are no longer in the position you was with me, you've moved. Now, we've told you, praise God, about in uh, Romans, the 14th chapter, I believe the 17th verse around there, it said that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, Come on. peace, <laughs> and joy, and, joy and the on. Holy Ghost. Amen? <laughs> so when we have a right standing, that is, we're walking according to God's word, and that righteousness, then we're, there's a peace with us. And then it will come and also give us the joy of the Lord. But see, when we are out of love, are walking out of love, uh, because you understand God is love. Praise God. That's who God is. Amen. And so if we had said last time that if Adam and Eve had not sinned, there would have been no reason for the Bible. Yes, come on. They had two laws. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, thy soul, and thy might. Praise God. And then thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do these two laws, you kept the whole Bible, praise God. And so that's all they had to do is continue to walk in love. And that was given to them from God. Amen. When he breathed the breath of life in them, that was given to them. But when man sinned, now we have to create all this other stuff, praise God. And so when we are out of right standing or our position shift with God, our peace is disturbed. Yes, you know, sometimes we get mad with each other or mad with some other folk. We blame it on them. But the Bible said that, listen, if we'll keep our minds stayed up on him, yes, praise God, we'll on. have peace. And so we understand how the devil works. He wants us to get our mind off of God, off of God's word, off of walking in love so he can take our peace. Praise yes. God. If you get our peace, then he got our joy. But we understand the joy 
of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Glory to God. Oh. And so when God said, where are you? He <laughs> asked us the same question. Praise God. Something should have disturbed us when we walked out of love. Praise God. When we didn't keep love and we was walking contrary to the kingdom of God, then God said, Walter, where are you? Where Praise are you? God. It's not because God don't know where I'm physically at. Praise God. He's trying to get me to see that you need to repent. Amen. You need to get back in line. Praise God. So you can get in position. So that was a question he asked him. Where are thou? Praise God. Adam, your position has changed. So we find now that, praise God, that the, uh, Adam had sinned. And what really has happened is he had rebelled against the government of God. He was saying, I don't want you to be my Lord. I don't want you to be my God. In this situation, I'm going to do this the way I think it ought to be done. And see, that's called rebellion. Yeah. That is sin, praise God. When we have Jesus as our Lord and we don't want to do it the way Jesus said it, we are rebelling oh, like, like Adam. Know. Hallelujah. We are rebel, And now there's no peace, praise God, because my peace should not be predicated upon you. Yeah. My yeah. peace should not be predicated upon somebody else and what they're doing or not doing, praise God, because he is my peace. Glory to God forevermore. <laughs> and so I need to understand that. And so we find that they had rebelled against the government of God. You know they began to hide. That's the first thing we do is hide from God. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. And so they were hiding. Praise God. Now, we find that the wages of sin or the payment for sin, according to Romans 6.23, is death. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The wages of sin is death. Whenever we are contrary to the kingdom of God, we are allowing some death thing to begin to work in our relationship, in our life. We're trying to kill something. And so that's why it's important we get back in line with the kingdom of God. Not my feeling, not my emotion. Praise God. I'm walking out of the kingdom and out of alignment with the kingdom of God. And so sin now entered the world by one man and death by sin. Romans 5 and 12 says this. Wherefore, as by one man, look at this, sin entered into the world and death by sin, so that death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Mm -hmm. Now notice it didn't say that sin entered the world by one man and one woman. It said by one man and that, and we're going to go ahead and show you about this a little bit more, but see, man was, is the seed carrier. Everyone that is to come, he he has the seed for the woman doesn't have a seed. And so by one man, sin entered the world. Praise God. God could fix the situation if Eve had it done and he would have rebuked that. But the Bible said he listened to his wife. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God said, now, because you listened to your wife, you didn't listen to me. Now we should listen to our wife. But when they are wrong or when they're out of alignment with the kingdom, we shouldn't be listening. That's we should right. set the example, That's right, praise God, to do it correctly. So now when it says, like I said, sin entered the world. It was not in the world. God told me the day you do it, you will surely die. Sin entered the world by that disobedience. It was not in the world. And then it said death by sin. Whee. Now, here's what's important. When we look at this, when we said death by sin... We don't mean a particular sin or a particular thing Adam did, but it means an inherent sin or a genetic change has just occurred in you. But you have to understand sin, and we're going to show you this, and I want you to see this. This is why we talk about eating the blood. The sin now became part of his blood. And so that's the reason sin entered the world. Sin became a part of his blood. It changed its nature. Sin had become inherent now. It was genetic now, praise God, and it was going to cause a problem. And so mankind became a sinner by nature, praise God. In fact, Psalm 51 and 5 said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, in and in sin my mother conceived me. David said, Look, I came in losing, praise God. My nature was the sin. I came in a liar. I came in being selfish. I came in trying to work and manipulate stuff to get it my way. It is by nature. And so that, that's what we mean. Now, I'm going to show you in a few minutes, praise God, that you cannot have sin. It's not just your flesh. It's in the blood. Mm. Say it's in the blood. Say it's that. in the blood. It's in the blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I want you to see that. Praise God. Now, Satan, the father of sin, used temptation to cause Adam and Eve to enter 
into sin. We showed you that up on last time. In fact, the first John 3 and 8 said that he that committed sin is yeah. of the devil. Oh. Praise God. For the devil sent it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, in our group, in our group studies, our Bible study, we're in First John. We're right there. And we're going to be delving into that thing. It's going to be something awesome. I promise you that. But the Bible said that he is the father of sin. That means he is the one it was generated with. Now, he didn't die at that point. Amen. But you have to understand that death was still there. God didn't want death in the world. Praise God. Now, but he is the father of sin. Praise God. So Adam's failure caused the DNA of his blood to change. Oui. So that now everyone that would come from him would have his nature now. He was no longer the son of God because only one can be a son of God is that God has created your spirit. His has changed now. He's the son of Satan. Praise God. He's the son and so Jesus said, you are the son of your father and his works will you do? The devil, praise God. And so if you want to know who your spiritual father is, just examine your works. Oh my goodness, leave that thing alone. Glory to God. So <laughs> sin is in the blood, not the flesh. Now I can prove that to you because we find that when Jesus came, he could not come from a man because man had sin. Man, blood was already contaminated. And so he could not come from the blood of a man. He, he could come into the woman because the sin is not in the flesh. Really? And so God now supernaturally called the woman to become impregnated with his seed, his spirit. And so if sin was in the flesh, he still would have been born in sin. Yeah. So yeah. see, the woman, even though she had sinned, she didn't have the seed. Mm -hmm. And the sin ain't in the flesh. And so I want you to see this, praise God, that Father God now, praise God, uh, brings Jesus, praise God, and causes him to be born of a woman. Now, let's go back to our scripture text here. The life is in the blood, praise God. And so in verse 11 now in our text, which is in Leviticus 17, if you would, go back there and look again at verse 11. In Leviticus 17, and we're going to look again at verse 11, praise God. 11 said again, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. In the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. Mm -hmm. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to God. Mm -hmm. It is the blood that make it. Now, so let's talk about blood just for a few minutes. And we've covered some of this previous message. And I just want to touch this again to bring us back to remembrance. First of all, the blood supplies nutrient and oxygen to the cell. <laughs> Many times people think you die because let's say somebody shoots you and, and not you, praise God, but shoot someone. And so we think well, that's, that bullet or whatever killed them. Well, it's the blood that keeps running out because see the blood has to continue to circulate to keep everything in the body working properly. And so yes, it might stop, the heart might stop, the kidney might stop, but that's because no longer the blood can make yeah, it circle. And yeah, so eventually yeah. it's gonna kill you, poison the system and you and I would die. We can understand that you can live without your heart. Mm -hmm. But when you, they had a heart attack and they died, that's true, but the heart no longer pumping the blood. We need the heart to pump the blood. You understand? So we have found out that they can take your heart out, put you on a machine. You still can live even though you don't have the heart. And so, because the blood, as long as blood is circulating your body, you can still live. Every organ in your body is created to serve the blood. The blood has to function it. Praise God. The life is in the blood. Praise God. Say that. The life is in the blood. Hallelujah to God. So that's important. And so we find that blood brings nutrient and oxygen to the different cells. And then we have a multitude, millions of cells. And yet the blood is the one who brings the oxygen and, and uh, the nutrients. The blood removes waste from the cells to the lungs and the kidneys and your digestive centers. Praise God. That's metabolism. And it's very important because of the simple fact that the blood, if the blood doesn't remove these things, our system will be poisoned. So the blood goes in, it takes, move the waste out of our cell so that our body can keep being healed. It can keep being uh, going strong. Praise God. If it didn't, it would poison our system. The blood is responsible for supplying our immune system. Come on, come on. 
You, the bulk of your immune system is in your blood. Your blood is not only activated, something go wrong with your leg. Amen. When you see a bruise or something, that's the blood going to work. It's send the white car pulses there. It is sent and lock that thing down so that it will not infect. And so your blood is the major part of your immune system. And so therefore you and I need to eat right. Praise <laughs> God. We need to do right. Praise God. Be, and sleep and get our, our sleep and, uh, and exercise, do all of those things. And but, so the blood can function properly. Praise God. The blood is responsible for healing in the body. Glory to God. If your blood is messed up, there's nothing else you can do. Now, you take a person who has leukemia, and you find out that every so often, they're going to have to get something called a blood transfusion. Come on, say it. Transfusion. Transfusion. Because their blood is no longer functioning the way to do it. And if something is not done, their own blood will kill them. So they get somebody with some good blood. And when they get the good blood, then their bodies function. They feel strength coming back in their body. Mm -hmm. And so the blood is key. All the organs of our body supports the blood. Praise God. You can get a kidney exchange. You can get a liver exchange. But you need to understand something. They better serve the blood or organs begin to shut down. Yeah. And next thing you know, you don't have blood circulating in your body. And that's going to really call it death. So blood is very, very important. Did you also know that blood has poison in it at times? It's removing poison, mm -hmm. taking it to place. And, and your organs like the, your, your, your kidneys and your, your liver is, is purifying it, taking it out and making it work. And that's why God don't want you to eat the blood. You eating blood sometimes, you might be eating an animal poison. You might be eating some stuff that will kill you. Because whatever that animal blood is, you just ate it. And you brought it into your system. It's dangerous to understand. So the, I need you to understand, praise God, that this blood thing is for real. Uh, this is the reason God's people are not allowed to eat the blood. In very, very beginning, in Genesis uh, uh, 9 and 14, I'm sorry, uh, in verse 14 down he talks about, but also in Genesis 9 and 4, even after Adam, I'm sorry, Noah and them had come back. It was getting ready. God was getting ready to cut a covenant for him. God told him, listen, do not eat the blood of animals. Because at that point, they were just vegetarians. All they ate was that. Now, something had changed within the environment. You have to understand, before the flood, there was a canopy above, praise God, there was water beneath and above. And when the flood came, the Bible said the water from the deep came, but also the canopy before. Now, even then, they could live longer. There was something seen to have been to stop certain rays so that they didn't age quick. You know, you, you didn't get married till you're 150 years old. You didn't have your first boy till 175, 200 years old. <laughs> uh, you understand? Because they lived 800 years, 900 years. The environment was set for them to live. But when the flood came, if you'll watch, the years began to descend and began to change. And so it was important. He said, now you can eat meat. You can change that. But here's what I would do. Do not eat the blood. This is very beginning. Now we see here that he said the same thing. In fact, in the New Testament, Acts the 15th chapter, and if you have, you can turn there, but I just want to read two verses for you. Verse 28 and 29. If you remember this situation, that the apostles, there had been some Judaizers. These were people who had been under the Jewish law, had got saved, and they were saying, you have got to be circumcised to be saved. Mm -hmm. And so Paul and Barnabas were standing and said, not so. <laughs> it is not true. Amen. Pray God. We're saved by grace yes, through grace faith. Alone. And that <laughs> not it, itself is the gift of God. And so finally they had to take it to the elders and also to the apostles. And they talked it out. And, fi and finally James gave his final verdict concerning it. Now, and so they wrote a letter and sent it. Here's part of the letter, Acts 15, chapter 20, 29. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost yeah. and, and to us, us to lay up on you no greater burden than these necessary things. Now, these people just got saved, so they didn't want to flood with, oh, don't do this, don't do this. We're going to give you four things. If you do this, you're going to be all right <laughs> for now. Amen? Because we know you got to grow. Watch it, 29. That you abstain from meats offered to idols. See, if they know meats were offered to idols, they were not to eat that because they've been dedicated to their God. Yeah, Who knows what yeah. spirit they is? You can't go to a lot of places and pick up stuff people are dedicating to their spirit. You can bring some spirits home with you. But nobody on this line. Thank God. <laughs> All right. pray. And to us, to uh, I'm sorry, he goes on to say, and he said from blood. In other words, don't eat blood. And from things strangled, because when things are strangled, the blood stopped and coagulate there, mm -hmm. and you can be getting some bad blood again, eating that stuff. And from fornication. Hallelujah. 
These are four <laughs> things you got to do. Amen. You out there fornicating? Listen, you're in trouble now. Praise God. And nobody on here, but, but tell your cousin. Praise God. From which, if you keep yourself, ye you shall do, do well. well. Fare ye well. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you see, he said, it, listen, we just give you some basic stuff right now. We don't want to overwhelm you, but please don't eat no blood. Stay away from fornicating because you have to understand that that's going to mess your mind up. And then you're going to try to live right. You got all these pictures to live with. That's enough. Praise God. We're moving on. Now, <laughs> glory to God. So the life is identified with blood. Amazing. Life is identified with blood. The shedding of blood represents, look at this, the shedding of life. When blood is shed, God is seeing life because the life is the blood. All right. Since the blood contains the life, it is precious yeah, it is. to God. Since the blood contains the life, mm -hmm. shedding of blood is, listen, my, my, now my, we my. remember what Cain and Abel, remember what? that? When Abel, he said, your blood is crying out from the ground for me. God pays attention to blood shedding. Now, but now the shedding of innocent blood is even more so. We so I'm going to ask Sister Henderson, and look, and you can turn there with us, but listen to this very carefully. And I might stop you. Deuteronomy 21 through 9. Deuteronomy 21, starting with verse 1. Yes. If one be found slain in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it, lying in the field, and it be not known who has slain him, then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. Okay, so here's one the thing happened. They had this different cities. They had a certain boundaries. You know, this tribe had this, had that. And so they would have to measure to see who this person had been killed innocently, where and whose jurisdiction was it under. Mm -hmm. And so because now the leaders are going to be held accountable. All right. Now, now listen to the word of the Lord. I'm going to show you shedding of blood, period, because it's life to God, but innocent blood, even more so. Continue, Sister Henderson. Verse three. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man, even the elders of that city shall take an heifer, which have not been wrought with and which have not drawn in the yoke. And the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer unto a row belly, which is neither eared nor sown, and shall strike off the heifer's neck okay, go ahead. there in the valley. Mm -hmm. And the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near. For them the Lord thy God has chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the Lord. Now, this is his leaders, spiritual leaders, have a responsibility here because, again, this was the law. They were the one that had the law. They were responsible for the law. It's not like we have here, praise God. But it was very important that they understand God was saying, I'm going to hold you as a spiritual leader we responsible. Every believer is responsible, but in particular, our leaders. You need to understand as ministers, praise God, is not just a title. Yeah, come on. If you don't want to lead and set the example for the people, if you don't want to be held accountable, praise God, turn your paper back in. Whee! You need to do that as soon as you possibly can. Send Bring the paper Just back. holding some paper and then you're going about. We can't, we can't find you. We don't know where you are. You don't want to lead by example. You, you don't want to set an example for the people. Be a leader for the people. God will hold you accountable. And so that's very important. Continue, Sister Henderson. God has chosen to minister unto him and to bless the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. Mm -hmm. And all the elders of that city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands. Sound like some stuff right now. Go ahead. Over the heifer mm -hmm. that is beheaded in the valley. Mm -hmm. And they shall answer and say, our hands have not shed this blood. Neither have our eyes seen it. Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people Israel, whom thou hast redeemed. And lay not innocent blood unto thy people of Israel, of Israel's charge, and the blood shall be forgiven them. Verse 9. So shall thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you, when thou shalt do that which is right 
in the sight of the Lord. So when they didn't do this and innocent blood was shed and they didn't address it and deal with it, it brought a curse oui. upon the land. How much innocent blood oui. has been shed in the United States of America? Oui. Innocent Help blood brings a Lord. curse. It's not a light thing. Even the church is taking it light. We need to be interceding. We need to be yes, praying. Hallelujah. Yes. Concern anything. We need to speak out about it. We need to say something. Praise God. So curses do not come. Amen. Really? And so it's very important. Praise God. So blood, shedding of blood is a serious matter with God. But especially innocent blood being shed. Now we understand that 60 million babies have been aborted. That's how much blood is that? Oui. But let's just continue with a lot of our young men and young women in the city. Almost every weekend during the week, blood is being shed. And so we need to be standing in the gap. Yes, we need to be praying. Lord. We need to understand because those leaders had a responsibility. We need to pray for our leader, our government. Yes, Amen. Because yes. it's not like they're not trying to find out the people that's doing it. We need to understand this. So it's very, very important. All right, let's continue. Oui. Praise God. Now, the atonement for the soul. Matthew 26 and 28 say, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. You can't have it without shed blood. Praise God. Blood somewhere going to have to be shed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And then Hebrews 9, 22 say, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood, is no remission. Praise God. Now, that's very important. And that's why God took the animal first of Adam and Eve. There had to be blood to cover this sin. Praise God. Amen. It had to be innocent blood. It couldn't be just any blood. It had to be innocent blood. The animal has blood. It's, and that, that blood, the life is in the blood. So a life had to be given. Praise God for sin. Blood had to be shed. Even though it was an animal, that animal was innocent because the animals don't sin. And so God took that when he covered them with those skins. And I'm just imagining them skin had to be showing up nice because God wasn't putting no half stuff together. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying they came out there with some fur coat for real. You understand? But I'm simply saying, praise God, that that, that blood had to cover them. And that was very important. Now, the animals that were sacrificed were innocent. Therefore, their innocent blood satisfied the justice of God. The wages of sin had been paid by a death. However, animal blood temporarily paid the price. Animal blood couldn't take the, for, for the whole period of time. And so that's why under the Old Testament, they had to keep sacrificing, keep sacrificing animal. Hebrews 10 and 4 said, for it is not possible. That the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Glory to God. But that blood, that innocent blood of the animals for a period of time would cover the sin mm -hmm. so God could continually Glory. deal with them. Oh, bless his name. Praise <laughs> God. Good. It was not enough that blood was in the veins. It had to be offered upon the altar. Mm -hmm. Praise God. It, he didn't just want you to slay no, uh, no animal, had to put it on the altar. Now, we understand with Cain and Abel, there were some major issues going on there. You remember that? Now, we find from Cain and Abel that they came, and Cain brought all of his multiple vegetables and stuff. Praise God. He had them all up there, melons and, and praise God, tomatoes, and he laid a muck. But we find that Abel brought one sacrifice. It was an animal. Hallelujah. Praise God. The sacrifice, he put that sacrifice on the blood, and God said to him, Listen, Cain, it's not acceptable what you brought. Please understand that if our offering is not acceptable, then we are not acceptable to God. And we need to understand that. It's not that God didn't love him. God said, If you do right, you'll be accepted. Yeah, so it's going to be very God. important that we understand that. All right? Praise God. Let's continue. So now, each sacrifice was a type of the sacrifice of Jesus, the Christ, which was to come. Mm -mm -mm. In order to redeem man, innocent blood was needed. One man couldn't die for another man because of the contamination of each one blood. We talked about a person that possibly had leukemia. They didn't need somebody who had the same condition as them come on. to give them their blood. They're, they don't need that because it's not going to help me. I still will die. I need some innocent blood. Glory I need God. some good blood Glory to come into me. And listen, if you got the same condition I got, I don't need your blood. 
That's why we need Jesus. Amen. Amen. I don't need uh, uh, one of the other false religion leaders who started their religion. They can't help me. Their blood just is contaminated as mine. Yes, come on. They were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. And so now they're coming to start a new religion and they're saying they are the one. No, you're not. You got the wrong blood. I need a blood transfusion and you are not the one to give that transfusion to me. Praise God. Mankind needed a blood transfusion from innocent Wee. man to restore him. Yeah, what? A blood transfusion. You need a blood transfusion. <laughs> Mankind needed another Adam, which would be the last Adam. Yes, sir. First Corinthians 15, 45 said, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living really soul. soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Really? Howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but which was natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. Earthly. earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. Praise God. Lord. The Bible called him the last Adam. Some of you, if you're not born again, you do not have the right blood. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You still got Adam's blood. Hallelujah. The blood is contaminated. Praise God. So your nature is to be a sinner. Praise God. I know you can't help it. You don't like the spiritual thing. I used to think I couldn't be happy up in church somewhere, sitting for a couple hours, and let somebody preach. Yes, sir. But I want to thank you. I got a blood change, and I love being there. Hallelujah to God today. I got the last Adam. Praise God. And so God sent his son. Jesus, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And he had innocent blood. Praise God. He had righteous blood. So when he died, his blood not only couldn't cover me, it eliminated my sin. It destroyed my sin. So there's no record of it in heaven. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Animal blood covered it, but <laughs> Jesus' blood blew it up. Hallelujah. So that there's no record left Glory in heaven God. concerning Glory it. Praise God. God. In God's eyes, I'm innocent. I want to bless my, him. My, my. So praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I just need to know today, have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Oh, or do you still have that old blood from the first Adam? <laughs> you need a blood transfusion. Oh, God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You need to get the blood of yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah to God. It's so interesting in scripture. <laughs> Jesus said that you need to eat my flesh. Look at this. And drink my blood. Oh, if you don't eat God. my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. Hallelujah. You need to get the blood of Jesus. So today I got a question for you. Have you had your blood transfusion yet? Really? Praise God. If not, I would love to lead you into where you can have your blood transfused. If you oh, never made my. Jesus the Lord of your life, oh. if you never have accepted him, my, not only as your savior, but as your Lord of your life, I would like to lead you in a prayer today. Praise God. I believe God is dealing with someone out there today. My, and my, today my, is the day, hallelujah my. to God, that you need Lord to give God. your life Lord. to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Don't wait another day. Praise God. So With all of this going on around this, are you ready to meet your God? Hallelujah. If God asks you, why should I let you in heaven? You can't say your good works. You can't say, well, I hope my good outweigh my bad. You, that won't work because one, how many sins did Adam and Eve do? One. One lie keep you out of heaven. So, but now Jesus, praise God, he paid the price for all yes. of your sin, past, present, and future. So let me pray with you if you've never made this decision. Mm. Uh, Father, I thank you thank right you now. Jesus. We come before you and we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're conscious of those sons. Praise God. It will never lose its power. Never. Oh, Hallelujah. the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That blood of Jesus. Praise yes. God. What can wash away yes, my sin? Nothing, Nothing but the blood, but the blood of yes, Jesus. So. What can make me whole yes, again? Come on. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So, Father, I pray for these persons, no, uh, people no. who have not accepted no, the Lord. No. I said today is the day yes. that their life get changed forever. The day no, is the Jesus. day that Jesus come to live in their heart. No, so, if that is you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, Hallelujah. I am sorry for my sins. I was born in sin. I was shaping in iniquity. But today, I want a blood transfusion. Today, I want you to become my Lord and my Savior. I believe that Jesus, come on, died on the cross, paid the full price for my sin. And I believe that if I will accept him as my Lord, that means my master, and my Savior, that means my deliverer, that this day, 
my name, come on, will be written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord. So today I said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Change my life. Make me a new creation this day. And with your help, I'll serve you for the rest of my days. Hallelujah to God. Now, if you did that, praise God. Oh, God. We want you, praise God, to let us know about it. Amen. You, we realize some people here may not have the internet. Praise God. So, uh, Sister Henry, if you would just give them the info and also the telephone number at the church and they can call if they don't have access to the internet, please, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the blood. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. It never loses power. Never. Glory. Hallelujah. Never. Um, if you have given your life to the Lord today, uh, what a privilege, what an honor. Info, I-N-F-O, at Baran Family Worship Center dot org. Again, info, I-N-F-O, at Baran Family Worship Center dot org. Mm -hmm. Also, the phone number for Baran Family Worship Center is area code of 414-873-8687. Mm -hmm. Please know that we are praying and that we're standing in the gap with and for you. We trust the Lord that whoever you are, and we truly sense that there is some folks Come who are on. watching us right now Praise God. that don't know Jesus as Lord, but you have given your life now yes. uh, at the pastor pray. Mm -hmm. Will you make contact with us? Please. We want to get some information into your hand. We're not trying to get nothing from you. Mm -mm. We want to give something to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, God bless you uh, this morning. Uh, can I just finish the last couple I don't of things? see why not. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating uh, the birth the resurrection, uh, the death. Uh, I'm all every place. That's right all right. Now. That's hey, you're, you're, you're good. Glory to God. You're good. The uh, celebration of the um, resurrection, the resurrection mm -hmm. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise I God. I know other folks call it something else, but mm -hmm. we call it Resurrection Sunday. And we want to also serve communion. We're going to do that remotely. Mm -hmm. And so when you come next Sunday, come with your communion ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will receive communion together uh, remotely, um, one with another. I believe that that is so important and so grateful Amen. that God is allowing us to be able to do that. Uh, I want to also say to you again, as we have said uh, before, stay focused. Stay alert, mm -hmm. stay safe, and the main thing for us is that you stay at home. And I know there's a lot of folks that's possibly watching this, but Baran, we love you, mm -hmm. and we want you to stay home. Amen? Amen. Stay home, stay focused, stay alert, and don't forget to pray. First Thessalonians 5, 7 says, pray without ceasing. And that's truly what we're asking you to do. Will you be mindful to also pray for one another mm -hmm. as you pray for the both of us? As we're standing in the gap for you, please know this, that we're praying without ceasing. We truly believe that the Lord has already heard the righteous when we cry out. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, we're looking up. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you again this Wednesday. Praise God at 7 o'clock for our Bible study. Where? Right here live. Same channel. Same channel, same <laughs> station, same people. We love you, <laughs> praise God. And uh, we're looking forward to sharing with you. We're in First John. The notes are online. Please download those notes. Please study them. And I'm telling you, we're going to get into this thing about more about the Antichrist. We're going to be dealing with that. And so we would love to have you with us. All right, Pastor. That's it. You preached that one this morning. Come on in. We're done. Praise God. Bless Hallelujah. the Lord. Right hand up. <laughs> May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Oh, Jesus. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and to be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance yes, upon thee. thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And give thee peace. peace. May God bless you. May you celebrate the blood of Jesus. It is the life. And we thank you that we have your life living in us. We have the blood of Jesus. We have your nature, your character, and your personality. We bless you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. Let us hear you say it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We God love bless you. you.